In this video, I'll show how to find and use special characters and glyphs in CorelDRAW, as well as characters from other languages. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial. The top line in this document is artistic text in Futura MD font. If I want to change the 50% to one half, I could of course edit the text and enter the fraction manually, but it would look nicer to use a fraction symbol here. This is an open type font, so first I'll check whether any open type alternatives are offered during editing. While I'm still in edit mode, I'll select the three characters that make up the fraction, and I have a small arrow I can click. The fraction symbol is available in this menu. I'll undo and see another way to do this. I'll open the Glyphs Docker, which I can do in the Window Dockers menu, or I can choose Text Glyphs. I can find and insert glyphs of any font, but let's see what's available in the font I'm already using. I'll find the correct font in the list, and by default, I have a list of all glyphs and symbols in this font. The one half is right here, and I can drag it where I want it. Now I just have to edit the text and remove what I don't need. If I'm using an English keyboard, I can easily insert this dollar symbol. But say I want to use a different currency symbol, and this list is rather long to comb through. I can filter the list to show only currency. When I close the filter window, I have all of the currency symbols in this font. I can increase the preview size if I need to see more detail. While this euro symbol is selected, I can click the arrow at the bottom to see its name, ID, Unicode, and keystroke. And rather than drag the symbol into the artistic text, I can click copy, then edit the text and paste it in. If I double click a glyph while a text object is open for editing, it will be inserted where the cursor is. If no text is selected, the glyph will be inserted as an individual text object in the center of the document. The glyphs that I've just used are now listed under Recent Glyphs, in case these are symbols I'd want to use repeatedly. I can bring glyphs into the document from here, or I can right-click to remove one or all from this list. I can also filter the list to show more than one category at a time, such as mathematical symbols, numbers, and symbols. Some open type fonts have more than one option for some characters. I'll look for what's available in the American Captain font and change the list to show glyphs for the entire font. Any character or symbol that has an arrow below it has alternates from other stylistic sets. If I enable Show All Glyphs, I can see the entire list with all alternates. For this font, there are six different capital letter A's and two different lowercase a's. I'll change the paragraph to the same font. If I edit the text and highlight an A, I have these alternatives. There are several R's as well. This will also work if I highlight the entire word. Now I can choose the alternate with my favorites from all characters. Many fonts support other languages as well. Let's say I want to add text in Hebrew. I'm in the text tool, about to create artistic text, and I'll open my fonts list and click the filter icon. Under character range, I'll check Hebrew, and this shorter list of fonts includes those that support Hebrew characters. I'll try Lucida Sans Unicode, displaying that font in the glyphs window. Scrolling down, I can see characters and symbols from many languages, including Hebrew. I can also filter this list to include only Hebrew characters. Now I can drag in characters one by one, placing each in the same text object next to the previous character. Note that I can't enter Hebrew text with my keyboard unless that language is installed in Windows. One way I can do this is via Windows Settings, opening Time and Language, choosing Language, and clicking Add a Language. I also have the option to make this my default language. To switch languages, I can click the English icon in my taskbar and choose Hebrew. Now in the text tool, I'll be typing in Hebrew. And if I prefer to use keystrokes instead of keyboard letters, I can go back to the glyphs docker and look at the details for a particular character. This letter can be created by pressing Alt 
and typing 0249. Finally, if I have the relevant fonts installed, I'll also have the option to write text vertically. As an example, I can install Chinese Simplified Font or Chinese Traditional. This font supports these characters, and I'll choose Vertical Text. When I drag characters into an existing text object, they are placed vertically. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on language and special characters in CorelDRAW. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial.